Okay, so I've been talking a lot about the psychology of audio lately, and I'm sorry, but a lot of you guys are in denial. And in fact, I've only got one word for all your nonsense about how expensive audio cables, amps, and other components sound so differently from one another. Bullshit. And you know what? I'm in good company. This guy spent 40 years of his life telling audio quacks the same thing. When he encountered one of you jokers, he'd simply point to this pin he proudly wore on his lapel. And I'm sure a lot of you know who he was. Inventor of the eponymous Klipsch horn, Paul W. Klipsch did not suffer fools gladly. The story goes that in the 60s, after reading yet another ad lauding the acoustic research AR3A speaker as a breakthrough, he threw the magazine in the air and screamed, Bullshit! And in response, Klipsch created this ad, ho-hum, another major breakthrough. It poked fun of the constant rejection of one- or two-year-old technology for the latest, greatest flavor of the month. After all, could there really be that many revolutions in audio every year? Probably not. And the ad sums it up with, so aren't you glad you own Klipsch horns? At that point, Klipsch horns had been around for about 20 years, and Klipsch still sells them today to many, many happy buyers. That's over 75 years on the market market with a largely unchanged design. I bullshit you not. After PWK famously threw the magazine in the air, bullshit became the company's unofficial slogan. They adorned it upon yellow plastic buttons and handed them out at trade shows. And PWK didn't just call out audio manufacturers, he also challenged those in religion. During sermons, he'd take notes, and after furiously challenged, exasperated ministers, he once responded to a cleric by opening one side of his coat with the word bull and the other with the words, yep, you guessed it. Okay, PWK probably didn't dress that way for church and likely wasn't rocking a six-pack, but give me a break, folks. This was the only stock photo of a guy opening his jacket I could find. Well, actually, that's not true. I just thought this one would be funny. So yeah, Paul Klipsch was a real character. And you know, the Klipsch website has done a really great job of telling his story. At New Mexico State University, he played cornet in the Aggie Band and credits his four years there for developing his love and knowledge of music and instruments. In 1928, he got a job maintaining electric locomotives in Chile. And that's where he encountered his first horn speaker, a box with a folded horn inside. Sound familiar? The design fascinated him, of course, and he formed Klipsch's Law, which states that efficiency is inversely proportional to distortion. Since horns are extremely efficient, he theorized that they would be the best way to reproduce low distortion sound. While serving as a lieutenant colonel during World War II at the Southwest Proving Grounds in Hope, Arkansas, he experimented with the idea and started developing his own designs. And there he also concluded that a corner, which kind of acts like a horn itself, is the best position for a loudspeaker. His hand-built corner horn speaker impressed so many that he decided to manufacture it professionally. He set up shop in a local tin shed and began manufacturing the speaker, which later became known as the legendary Klipsch horn. He received a patent for the design in 1945 and made each loudspeaker with his own hands until he hired his first employee in 1948. The rest is history, and I encourage you to check out the Klipsch website for more about the eccentric Paul W. Klipsch. On his 90th birthday, a good biography video was released that you may want to check out as well, and I'll leave a link to that for you in the description. PWK died in 2002 at the age of 98. I own a couple of pairs of Klipsch speakers myself, the KLF 30s and the original Klipsch Fortes. And you know, I bought my Fortes in 1986, largely due to Julian Hirsch's extremely positive review. In Stereo Review magazine, he wrote, The Forte's low-frequency distortion was by far the lowest we have ever measured. Its distortion and sensitivity measurements are so outstanding that comparison with most other speakers is impossible. And it was true, when I demoed them, they really did sound much better than anything else in the showroom. Klipsch's are still among my favorite loudspeakers, but nowadays I somewhat prefer vocals on speakers that offer less directivity, despite the very, very real advantages of horns. That said, I always put Klipsch on the list of speakers I recommend. So how about you? What's your experience with Klipsch? Are you on board with their philosophy, or do you think they're full of bull? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you soon. 
Looking for a shiny new gadget for your bench? Some good books on electronics, vintage hi-fi or old radios? Indispensable tools, cleaners or other products? Check out my new Amazon shop and help the channel. Lots of great products I actually own, use and recommend. Plus my thoughts on each one. Link in the description. To stay updated, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications when I release new videos. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.